Hello everybody. <clears throat> How you doing today? I hope you're having a good day. A lot of you are getting out today and uh, going to assemble with the Saints. And that's great. Some of you are still afraid to get out. But uh, uh, th this thing's going to be with us for a long time. So you just got to wonder how long can you stay away from services and still be faithful. That's the problem. All right. Um, today is the Lord's Day. And... Um, we need to be rejoicing and be glad in it and realize that if you woke up today, if you're listening to this message, God has given you another opportunity to do something for him. And yes, you think, well, I'm going to get up. I'm going to make the effort. I'm going to get to church services and that'll be good enough. Well, is it? All right. The title of the lesson today is I am the problem. All right. See, there's there's no maybe or possibly deta attached to this statement. The human being is full of trouble. You know the the problems. Like Job had his problems, and was and it was in Job fourteen one says man is a few days and full of trouble. And yes, we all have problems in this life, and these problems are made manifest in many ways. And, of course, it is much easier to blame someone or something else for our problems. Like when our car breaks down. Well, you blame the car when you know full well that you've ch you should have changed the oil every 5,000 miles. Or you're running on a bad tire and blame the tire when it wears out at a most inconvenient time. Yeah, and um, we blame our boss. We blame our tools. We blame our families. We blame our social status position. We blame the devil, and we blame just about anything other than where the real problem lies, and that is me. So, yes, I said it. See, the problem is me. See, I know that because I read in my Bible that I am the problem. There, there are several places you could turn. I want to look at here, James 4, 17, tells me, He that knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. There's a lot of things that we know are right to do. And we just kind of choose not to do it. Well, we have different reasons for it, but see, that's the problem. We start making up excuses. We start making up reasons. And we eventually, we don't do what we're supposed to do. So, yes, I fail God every day. But I'm not worried because I know His grace covers me at least as long as I'm trying to please God and I have the confidence that the blood of Jesus keeps me clean as I confess my sins. And yes, uh, I know, just like the Apostle Paul said, you know, I'm really not worthy. I really don't deserve it, but God was gracious to me, just like uh, Paul said the same thing. So yes, I'm going to try my best to help others come in contact with the blood of Christ. And that comes through teaching, as I should. Problem is, I don't always do it as I should. And I realize that. So that, that's the first step in getting on the right track. So we really have no one to blame but ourselves in dealing with our personal problems. And we must realize that when it comes to problems facing the church, we still have to blame the same individual. Yes, that is right. I am to blame. Now, in, in many ways. Now, some of us say, well, well, wait a minute, I do my part. Well, okay, here's the problem, but notice this. See, I am to blame when my brethren are flirting with Satan and playing footsie with worldly things. See, when, when I see my brethren losing their faith, I feel it is my responsibility to help them overcome like they are supposed to do. But what do I do? Most of the time, I do nothing. I just figure that they will have to answer to God for their own decisions, no matter how wrong those decisions are. And yes, I'm sure some of you can probably look in the mirror and say, yep, that's the way it is. See, I, and I know that the store clerk, my neighbor, my friends, and all that I come in contact with are lost, but do I, do, do I make the effort to share the blessed gospel with them? Well, sometimes. 
but not all the times. And so I, I should recognize that as a failure on my part. And so, well, you probably figured out the answer because you are probably just as guilty as I am. You know, Jesus and his apostles had no problem going to the lost. And so why do we? Well, perhaps we are afraid of rejection or ridicule. You know, we talked about fear the other day, how fear controls us. And this is one of those things that it does control us. We're afraid someone will make fun of us or call us names. And, and so we need to be honest here. Uh, I don't always take the time to teach them. Even though I have a DVR to record shows, I do my best to be in my seat when the show comes on. You know, probably just like you. So that's some, some excuse some have made. Well, i got to watch the ball game. Well, you got a DVR. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to record it, but uh, I still have to be there when it's happening. I mean, so that's what, that was their excuse for not going to church because it interfered with their ball game. Well, you know, in, in many ways, our shows take a priority. That's, that's what, what, it's, what you're telling me and what I'm telling you is these things take a priority. You know, maybe the kids have a ball game and we make sure they are at practice or game on time. And yet, we sit there in the stands watching with all the other parents all the while knowing that they are lost. And what do we say? Come on, little Billy, hustle out there. And we don't start telling them about church. And sometimes with, when the kids have a ball game, we make sure they're at the ball game or the practice, even though it may ha occur on a Wednesday night when the saints are meeting for assembly of some sort. Or sometimes even on Sundays they have games. You know, some 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 groups have tournaments uh, the whole weekend, and that that's starting on Saturday and ending Sunday night. And oh, gotta make sure the kids are there. They can't let their team down. But what about God? So that's what we're teaching our kids, and and that's that's pro and that's once again we are the problem. We have allowed something to get in the way of serving God, and sometimes our children see that maybe God is not that important. Other things are more important. So, see, here, here's the result of this problem. Now, when we consider the church with all its problems, can we rightfully blame Satan? Can we blame the false teachers out there or the world? No, we cannot. See, God has placed the responsibility of keeping the purity of the church on me. And yes, the elders have some responsibility. The preacher has responsibility. Other members have their part also. But the bottom line is that I have a great duty to perform for the work and worship of the church. And if we have problems, I have failed. Maybe I didn't try enough. But, okay, let, let's also be honest. See, if we're doing our part that God wants us to do, see, that, that's what we're supposed to be doing. And then the rest we leave up to God. See, folks, it is time that we get busy doing our part and what God has given us to do. If we are going to walk around claiming to be servants of God and proudly wear his name as our own, we had better be doing what he wants us to do. So blame yourself and get busy, repent, and start doing what God wants you to do. And so, uh, let's just have one final thought here. It is those who are likely to admit such that they are wrong, that they are the problem, as we have been talking, who are probably the hardest workers in the church. Let's be honest here. People who work very hard, who share the gospel, who teach and, and try and help others get to heaven, they would probably be one of the first ones to admit, I am the problem. And see, those who have little interest in doing God's will would have a problem admitting that they are the problem in the church. They want to blame the preacher. They want to blame the elders. They want to blame the other members. They want to blame something, maybe the, the time or whatever. And so, yes, sadly, most of us will consider this a very sad truth. So think about these things and always realize that, yes, 
I am the problem, but you know what? I'm working on that. That that that's where we take it from here. See that that just the uh, just like any recovery program, you have to first admit you have a problem, and then you deal with the problem. So yes, I am the problem. Now what do I need to do? Really, it's as simple as just doing what God wants me to do. And so I got to learn what God wants me to do. So that's why I have to study. And so um, that's it. That's our lesson for today. Consider these thoughts. Uh, we're, we're, Lord willing, we'll be back again tomorrow with another lesson. And uh, if you have the opportunity, share this message with other Christians. Uh, share it with others and share the gospel message with those that you normally do not share a gospel message with get on facebook and put a little sermon on there if you want to borrow somebody's outline do that and put it on there give them the credit for the outline but still that's doing something and we we can all do something but it's best that we don't do what's the word nothing yeah we we can't do nothing and expect uh, god to be happy with us all right, that's it for today. Bye-bye for now.